Yo, what's going on, y'all? It's your boy. It's your host, Calvin Domingo, a.k.a. Steezy A. Smith. And today, for the third ever exclusive interview with Press Sports. And if you guys don't already know, you know what they say, third time's a charm. And for our third, V-I-G. And that stands for a very important guest. I didn't say a VIP. We have a very, very, very important person to bring to the table today. She's a Clemson alumni. She currently attends Radford University. And she's the newest and the latest addition to the family. But before I introduce her, I'd be remiss not to mention the fact that, yo, over here at Press Sports for our interviews, we're looking for users who have a story to tell. And we believe Miss Childs right here has a very important story to tell. So, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Miss Crystal Childs. Thank Crystal. you. I feel so welcome. I'm so excited to be here. Of course. Like I said, Crystal, welcome to the family. You know, you're part of the team. Um, I just got to ask, though, I know it's kind of late over there on the East Coast. How are you doing and how's your day? I'm good. Today's been great. Super busy. I woke up early, worked out with the youth camp at my old club, um, hanging out with the kids. You know, they always a blast. They're going to keep it 100. So it was really fun and just kind of hanging out with my family while I'm home for the summer. Right, right. And so, I mean, speaking of the summer over here in Seattle, I don't know about you guys, but it's real, real sunny. I got, you know, a red sunshine kind of just going through my room. Uh, real quick, I got to ask, how's the weather like? Is it hot over there? Is it warm? Is it, Has the sun been out? Ooh, the sun has been out. Today, it's like yeah. degrees outside, so I definitely stayed in. I'm not much of a fan of the heat. Oh, really? What? So you kind of an indoor person then? Yeah, that's why I chose volleyball. I did not want to be out there. <laughs> <laughs> An indoor sport. Mm-hmm. All right, man. Well, at Chris on me, like I said, it's getting late over there. So, you know, we're going to kick things right off. Um, Obviously, and like I mentioned, you know, you're a volleyball player, right? You're the latest addition to the family. We'll touch on this towards the end of the interview, but you're the latest female head personality at Press Sports. I'm real excited to touch on that. But before we do touch on that, you a volleyball player. And so, you know, I got to ask, like, how did you get into volleyball? Like, has this been something you've been doing ever since, you know, you was a little kid? Were you playing any other sports? Just tell me about your journey. Yeah. So basically, ultimately, I did choose volleyball, but it's such a crazy career path I took. I grew up in a basketball family. There was nothing but basketball court down in the backyard and basketballs just all over the house. I had I think my first jersey put on me when I was maybe like six months courtside. So I really had no yeah. choice but to pick up a ball. And I told myself I was going to be the first girl in the NBA. Nobody could tell me anything different. I told myself I was Stephanie Curry for the long <laughs> <laughs> um, I played basketball pretty much all of my youth career. So all through elementary, I was playing with the boys. During PE, you're going to see me playing with the boys. Um And then eventually I got to the point where I got into kind of the high school feeder team. So I was doing a lot of middle school stuff, but I knew once I got to high school, I needed to start really dialing in on what sport I wanted to play. And me thinking it was going to be basketball, that's what I chose. So I played basketball all through seventh grade. And one of my teammates actually told me that for her summer conditioning, she plays volleyball. So I'm like, "Mm, I'm not really into that. I'm going to stick with the hoops. I'll be outside shooting. And finally, she was like, Chris will come like practice with me. It'll be so much fun. I think it'll be so good. They persuaded me. I wind up going to a volleyball tryout. And I made the like our junior gladiator team. That was our junior high school team. Had no idea what to do. I was dunking the volleyball, which is illegal oh, to do yeah. during the game. Uh, and, damn. <laughs> yeah, I just thought I was too aggressive for it. But eventually, I really liked the team chemistry because basketball, you can be very individual. You can really work on your own craft. But with volleyball, you have to get like three touches or less to get it over. But you have to work with your teammates to get like the best play set up. So in basketball, you really could just pull up and shoot the three. But for volleyball, like you need your teammates to set you up for the best success, especially me being a hitter. So I really love the team chemistry. And once I got to the age where I had to make that decision recruiting wise, and I unfortunately had a couple of injuries that made me have to put a pause on my basketball career. I had a stress fracture in my back, which was rough, but it was definitely a blessing in the skies because it really made me dial into volleyball and I'm here today. Wow. And that's crazy because, I mean, you know, obviously I'm not I'm not playing college sports right now. Right. But growing up like I, basketball was well, baseball was my first love. But, mm-hmm. you know, I had gotten hit with a fastball. I think when I was like four or five years old. And so after that, I was like, hold on, I need a new sport. And, you know, yes. I transitioned over to basketball. 
And even to this day, like, you know, before I got on with Press Sports, I was doing a whole bunch of football coverage, you know, football podcasts, football shows mm -hmm. and whatnot. But basketball is always going to have a place in my heart. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I was a hooper growing up. And so I, I think it's real cool that you start off as a hooper. Um, and, and now, you you know, you you a superstar and volleyball. <laughs> um, but like we had talked about off air, you know, Drew told me that your your um what's it called your stepdad well you actually told me your stepdad played in the nfl and your biological father played in the nba and like you also told me they kind of influenced you know your decision to get into sports so what was it like being the daughter you know of, of i guess a stepdad and a, and a biological dad that played you know in, in these professional leagues like how how is that like yeah, I mean, honestly, it was awesome and it's definitely a privilege and blessing that I'm very thankful for and do not take for granted. But they both influenced me in different ways. Um, they're both very involved in my life. Uh, my biological father, he played for the Knicks. He also played for the Raptors. So we were up in New York a little bit and just being around that environment and just seeing like how like cool the fans were. Like you see everybody so involved in the game. You see the way that like they're running the ball on the court. That's really what got me into playing basketball. It's like seeing that and being around and like seeing his jerseys hung up around the house. And I'm like, one day I'm gonna get a jersey frame. That's really what started my career. Like, I don't know how I'm gonna do it, but I'm gonna figure out how to get this frame. So that's how I picked up basketball. And just seeing that, watching him on like TV when I was younger, I'm like, that's like so cool to me because that's what I like idolize. Like, Anytime I'm looking at any type of athlete and just seeing that they're actually genuinely enjoying what they're doing, because I know that's like what my dad was doing, it made me really want to become more passionate about my sport. And then moving forward, when my stepdad was introduced into my life, um, he was 100% supportive of anything I decided. Even when I was 13, I said I was going to quit volleyball because I hated losing. And I was like, I don't know why I'm so bad. Like, it is, you know, you so, you're your hardest critic. So, I just was so tough on myself making that transition from basketball to volleyball. And my dad would stay up with me, tell me like, okay, let's watch some film. Let's figure it out. Um, we went to the gym. My stepdad owns the gym. So we would go in and work. He was like, we're not giving up on this. Like we're going to figure it out. And his support and also seeing how committed he was to the NFL. He played for the Bills, the Falcons and the Saints. But his Bills career was so awesome. He lasted 10 plus years in the NFL. He was super into just like physical health and mental health and making sure that athletics is not just about performance, but it's also about how you're holding yourself accountable. So all of those like morals and values he instilled in me. And he really showed me that like, if you want to do it, write it down, set that goal and then tackle it like head on. So without him, I definitely would not have made it to Clemson. He was the one who told me to go to Clemson too because I was so nervous about leaving home. I thought I was going to go to school in state. And he's like, Crystal, like, get out there. Like, go conquer another state, another school, and you always can come back to us. Like, we're always going to be here. So they both definitely influenced my journey, and I'm very thankful for even being in that type of athletic community while I was younger. Man, that's that's so dope to hear. Um, and, and matter of fact, I'm actually I'm gonna have to steal that from you. You, you talked about how and it was your step pops, right? That said this, go yeah. conquer another state. Yeah, that's, I, that's something I can resonate with. You know what I mean? Because like sometimes, you know, I'd be hesitant. I'm like, yo, you know, I've been in Seattle pretty much all my life. Mm -hmm. Um, and because I've had you know instances where I kind of you know had to make a decision, like, yo, maybe I could potentially move out here or. You know, I'm comfortable over here in Seattle. You know what I mean? Like, I, I got something going for me. I, I, you know, I got something going on, but go conquer another state. I, I'm going to definitely hold on to that. I, so, you know, he, hey, I appreciate that. By him, he is a man of wisdom, but he's also uh -huh. the funniest and nicest guy. And he looks so intimidating. Like, I'm just sitting here. <laughs> you see him down the street, he's like, oh my gosh, you're so scary. And then he like lights up the room with a smile. But he did always tell me, there's no room for growth in somewhere you're comfortable because you're relaxing. So if you're not out hey. there getting it and grinding, then you're not going to get better because nobody's better when they're laying on the couch. So that's no, so Ooh, man, we over here spent some real space. Yeah, you know, we just start the interview. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, and see, I, I like to consider myself a sponge. And, you know, I'm over here just absorbing already. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so, you know, that, that's real dope. Uh, definitely somebody I'd like to meet. I mean, damn, you know, you're talking about all this. Um, yeah. <laughs> episode for sure. <laughs> no, definitely. Definitely. Um, but what's the call? So, Crystal. Um, so, like I said, off air, um, you play for the A5 Volleyball Club in Atlanta, Georgia, growing up. So, do you still do stuff with them? What was it like playing for them? 
And if you are working with them, how's that experience like as well? Yeah, so A5 was such a roller coaster of a time. It's funny because me and my teammates were still extremely close to this day. We have our group chat and we just were hanging out the other day, my team. But I got involved with A5 when I was 13. I just made that transition, kind of adding volleyball to the schedule. I wasn't completely done with basketball yet. I just knew that during the summertime and off season, I wanted to still stay in shape. So I started playing the high school feeder team. And my coach was like, you should really try out for A5 because she also was affiliated with them. She's like, it's club volleyball. You play throughout the year. You compete at a high level. You play during the summer. So at the time, I was still doing AAU basketball. And I'm like, I'm not sure that's going to conflict with my schedule. But, you know, I'll look into it. So she's like, go to tryouts. I know some of the coaches there, like, they'll take care of you. So I go to A5 tryouts, and when I tell you, that was the most intense tryout. That was more intense than I think going to, like, a college camp. There's hundreds of girls all over, not even just Georgia, hundreds of girls over Georgia. There's girls from Alabama, Florida, South Carolina that would drive down just to be a part of this club. A5 is very known, um, very high-ranked, a great club. Um, They make sure to take care of their people there, but they also are very persistent in like competing for that top ranking. I think when I tried out for a five, they are at least like top five in the nation at the time in clubs. So I didn't know any of this information. So it wasn't like overwhelming knowing how big they were. I just saw these girls and I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing here, but we're just going to thug it out, see what, how it goes. So I tried out for the team. Um, I made the 13 two. So at a five, they usually have about five teams in rankings. So there's like one, two, three, four, five. When I was 13, I made a two team. So I was a very high team. And I was very thankful that I made that team and got to work with some of the best coaches at a young age. After that, I made the 14 ones team the next year. So that year was super intense. I had one of the best coaches and I talk about her to this day. Um, her name was Suzanne Fitzgerald. She worked at A5 and she was like completely like military army base, strict discipline. That is where I get my discipline from, that lady right there. And we had matching hair ties, matching backpacks, matching shirts, like everything. There was no lack of anything. Um, But as I got older, I started learning more about like the game and the involvement and going to clubs and competing at high levels. Like my volleyball IQ just started like growing. And I'm just seeing the game from such a different view than I was like when I first started. So I think that's what really made me love the game more because also A5 was so valued in like your work ethic. They gave us extra classes. I used to go to VP every Monday and all my A5 girls know about VP. So you go to VP, you're going to get your extra work in, but they're going to kill you and you're going to be dead on Tuesday. But it was such a great experience because I realized if I could get through that and how intense the workouts were, the coaches, like they knew what they were talking about. Their IQ level was out the roof, but they're going to give you that tough love because they know what you're capable of and your potential. Like they never let me just do the bare minimum because they knew I could always give more. After my 14th year, I played for the 15 ones. Um, and then I played for 16 twos, 17 twos. And then I finished with 18 ones, which was the top team in the club. Um, by that time, we all were getting ready to commit and we just had like a great season and we finished, I think our club was about fourth or fifth in the nation at that time too. So it was a great time. They just renovated and that's where I've been working. I've been helping out with their summer camps, um, their youth camps. This week I'm working with the middle school all skills camp, which is really fun. The kids are great. And just kind of staying connected because like they really created that foundation and platform for me to even be exposed to a lot of these college coaches and just being able to put a five on my resume and on my like recruiting for a lot of coaches that like sparked a red flag. And they looked at me just because they saw that name. Man, I was going to say, um, do you ever have kids like just ask for your autograph and whatnot? I mean, because if they see like on TikTok and Instagram, like, you know what I mean? But it's funny because I was working Clemson camp, I think it was last year, and a couple of the A5 girls came. And it's funny because our spandex are navy blue, and there's a big A5 sign on the right thigh. So the second you see that A5 sign, like, you automatically know it's an A5 girl. And somehow you probably had a coach throughout, like, your career. So I saw a couple of girls. We had the same coach. We were connecting, took pictures. Um, Usually at, like, any volleyball-related event or camps, if I find an A5 girl, they'll usually ask for, like, a picture and stuff. But... I think it's just cool seeing the next generation come up because that was me a couple of years ago. Yeah. Um, and man, that's always a good feeling, right? Just going back to it brings back a sense of nostalgia, right? Yeah. 
Right. Okay. Um, backtrack just a little bit though. So you talked about A five and how you grew up. You know, you play for them. Um, but Clemson. You know, I know you're you're not currently at Clemson. You're a Clemson alumni, but I want to get to know more about your Clemson journey. You know, the whole recruiting process. What was it like? You know, being recruited by a top tier program like Clemson, and I mean, how would you grade your your time and your experience over there? Yeah. So I could talk about Clemson for hours. I had nothing but such. Like sometimes I'm just like so lost for words to even explain how thankful I am for that opportunity. And the way that it came about was just out of thin air. Um, so kind of like going back to how it began during my time at A5, it was my 17th year. We were kind of getting into like the little middle of recruiting. So junior year is kind of when like recruiting really picks up for like a lot of like um, summer sports and stuff. So you know, I was looking at a couple good schools. I'm very undersized for a power five hitter. I'm a solid five nine, but six foot at heart. So when I play, I don't play to my height. Regardless, I'm going to find a way to score. But during that time, for me being kind of like undersized compared to a lot of the other hitters in my class, I was looking at a couple more like mid-range schools. And I was like super excited about a couple of the schools I was talking about. And like I said, I wanted to stay close to home. So I really narrowed down all the schools to kind of like the South, like East, like region, knowing that like I wanted my family to come to my game since they've literally been my rock through this. I was trying to find things that were like driving distance or like a quick flight or something that would be very um, easy for them because I also have two baby sisters and another sister that's younger. So whole family full of girls, but I wanted them to all be at my game. So once I was kind of in the middle of my recruiting process, I actually was looking at another school and it's so crazy how this worked out, but I called them. This is right before nationals, my 17th year. I called them and I was like, I'm ready to commit. And they said, we can't let you commit because there's another girl playing for your scholarship and you guys play each other at nationals. So it just winding mm -hmm. up that our teams play each other. So they're like, we're deciding if we want to split it, how we want to go about it, but we really want to bring both of you guys on board. We need to see how you guys play. So I said, okay, a little competition. Like, I, I like the sound of that. So I'm like, okay. So we go to nationals. Um, this is 20, 2016, 2017. And we play the girl. She was a beast. Um, it was such a fun game because we both kind of knew what was going on. We saw the coaches there and everything. And it was a nice little friendly rivalry. Uh, we won. But <laughs> let's get it. Yeah, you know, we, we made sure that I told my team too. I was like, y'all, we got to win this game. And they're like, yeah, we got you. So we were going crazy. So we finally um, finished that day of nationals. It was the first day of nationals. Right when we finished playing, everybody's talking. So it, the volleyball world, when you go to these big tournaments at these big convention centers, and usually you start meeting girls through the net, teams become friends, you have friends from other teams. So I'm talking to another friend from a team and she goes, Clemson just hired a new head coach. So I'm like, um, who is Clemson? <laughs> I didn't know at the time. Oh, I had no idea. I've heard of the school, but like I just really was not paying attention to the location or anything about it or that they even were looking for a new coach. So I'm like, OK, that's cool. What does that have to do with me? I'm about to commit. So then they were like um, they just posted on Prep Volleyball, which is a website and there's a college needs list and coaches will go on there with their schools and post positions they need, requirements they're looking for, like skills and stuff that they're looking for. So right when we heard about the new hiring of the coach, we didn't know who it was, what they looked like or anything. We looked on the list and I remember there's a big crowd of us over a phone and it says all six positions needed in my class. Mm. So I'm like, hold on, I need to figure out where this head coach is. So that night I emailed the coaches um, I found one of them. So I emailed him and I'm like, Hi, my name is Crystal Childs. Please come watch me play. So because of my height, they did not come to watch me play. So what? I was like, yeah. So at the time, you know, it's very normalized to find like really big hitters for Power 5 because Power 5 is a very big and dominant um, university schools. So I understood. I said, OK, it's fine. I'm going to find a way to get in front of you since you don't want to come watch me play. Right. So I look on the website and I see that they have camp. So they have recruiting camps every summer for a lot of schools and Clemson just posted their camps. So I look on the website and I just finished nationals at this time. And I see that camp registration is closed for the elite camp. So I'm like, okay, I got to find a way to get to this elite camp. So I'm calling my A5 coaches and I'm like, do you guys happen to know anybody over at Clemson? So they're like, we do know someone. 
gave me the number. I called them like, hi, my name is Crystal Childs. I play for A5. Um, I would love to come to your camp. Is there any way that I can register over the phone or bring the money and the papers in person? So um, it was my freshman coach, Coach E. He was on the phone. He said, yeah, just come ahead. Like, we know a couple girls at A5. They're already going to be at the camp. So I'm like, cool. So I come for registration, fill out everything. They put me on a random court. And I'm very confident in my skills, but I definitely think I should have been on a higher court because the recruit court was over there and I was over here. So I'm like, it's okay. I'm just going to keep playing. And when we scrimmage the recruit team, like I, I'm going to go off. So I'm in the gym and we're playing. I'm just having a great time. It's just fun being on a college campus. Like I'm just so excited to even be here. And I remember I'm shagging balls and the assistant coach who was um, coach Jackie at the time, who was my head coach this past year, she comes over and she was like, why are, you, why are you shagging? And I'm like, oh, that's just something that A5 taught us. Like, never let a ball be on the court. Like, something that just was, like, completely disciplined into me. She goes, okay, um, I'll see you during lunch. And I'm like, okay. So then I come back after lunch. They put me on the recruit court after watching me play. And they're like, we really like um, your energy. So we want you to come play over here. So now I'm with the recruits. So I'm like, okay, I'm making progress. And I see my teammate. Um, Erin Williamson, she's my libero. She was there. I'm like, Erin, what are you doing here? She goes, oh, I didn't know you were going to be here. Like, I'm with, like, um, the recruits, like, Clemson is, like, interested in me. I'm like, that's awesome. Like, I want them to be interested in me. Like, what do I need to do? She's like, just play, Crystal. Like, you're so good. Like, they'll know this too. So I'm like, okay, thank you, like, for the confidence. So playing with my teammate, like, and I already had that bond, I think definitely helped me because I was so comfortable playing. And I just was like, okay, Crystal, give it everything you have. Anytime the coach come over, don't do too much. Like, don't be extra, but just know that like this is your opportunity. So like, take it. And I just think. Oh, sorry. What happened? So like, you still see me? Yeah, no, you good. Okay, sorry. Like my, my FaceTime came up on my computer. But yeah, so long story short, I finished camp, and afterwards, the coaches reached out to me like, we want you to come back on a visit. We love your gameplay. We love your energy and the way that you just came to camp and like got in front of us. Like, that's what we want. Mm -hmm. And I was like, really? Like, this is not happening right now. Like the registration was closed. Nobody was answering my calls. I was on like a Damn. really far away court from the coaches and like everything is just coming in line. So I come back for a visit two days later The camp finished on like Wednesday. I came back on Friday. It's a two hour drive. I went on campus and the second I like stepped on campus, like this is where I want to be. Like, I just knew I don't want to be anywhere else. For the coaches to even see me out of 100 plus campers and like ask for me to come back, like this is such a blessing. So I finished my tour. I loved everything. I went home. I talked to my parents all weekend about it and I committed that following week. Just like that, huh? Straight like that. But yeah, it was wow. such a roller coaster, but I wouldn't change it for the world. Wow. What such an incredible story. I mean, to the folks out there that's tuned in, um, Wow. Uh, I, I'm, pretty, I'm pretty sure they had the same reaction. You know, it's just, wow. Um, so I guess for the most part, you had a, a positive and a great experience playing for such a top tier D1 program like a Clemson. Yeah. So it was really exciting being able to get to Clemson. Um, coming from A5, we always played very like high level teams. So I was super excited to play for ACCs, one of the Power Five conferences. And the ACC volleyball was rising every single year. So I came in with a huge class of eight girls. And we all still talk to this day. It was awesome. We had a girl from Detroit, Texas, two girls from Texas, um, two girls from South Carolina. And we all just completely like meshed together. So it was really exciting coming in with such a big freshman class and being able to put like the program on a full 180. Um, they had a coaching change prior to when we came there. So this was our head coach's second year at the time. They had some big time recruits. We had a girl from Ohio State and a girl from Illinois. So being able to like come in, like immediately make an impact was awesome. And being a freshman, you know, they always tell you like, just go in, absorb everything. Like it's a completely new level. Nothing is going to be the same from high school. Like what you did in high school. Yeah. You may have been the best on your team. Now everybody's the best. So mm -hmm. that was definitely a big change for me. Cause I'm like, Oh my gosh, why am I not like bouncing this ball right now? I'm getting like roof blocked, but it was still exciting just to be able to like, play at such a high level and like the fan base at Clemson is ridiculous our gym used to be packed to the fullest 
we had cheers. We were so excited on the sideline and being able to just play all over the East Coast with all these other like big time teams was so much fun. We did have like a coaching change, but my final year at Clemson was arguably not even arguably just definitely the best year I've ever had. Um, my head coach, Jackie Kirk, was so supportive of everything I did. She also helped me with my recruiting process for grad school. But throughout my four years, she was a complete rock. She would take time out of her day if I wanted to get extra reps, help me get my reps in. She would just text me, checking in on me mentally, physically, emotionally. Um, unfortunately, I had a couple like injuries throughout my time at Clemson. Anytime something happened, she was the first person to text me and make sure I'm okay. They genuinely care about you as a person than just an athlete there. Right. And, I mean, speaking of that, you weren't just an athlete. You were also a student athlete. Yes. And so you were a fantastic student, actually. Mm -hmm. So how did you balance – and, you know, just talk to me. How did you balance, you know, being such – not just an exceptional athlete but an exceptional scholar as well? Thank you. Yeah, so definitely was a huge adjustment. I'm not going to lie. During high school, I did not study much. Um, thankfully, a lot of things just kind of came to me. But also – being so focused on sports throughout high school, I knew like time management skills was super important because if I had an essay due like Friday night, but I also have an away game, there's no way I'm going to be able to do that like last minute. So making sure that like I was organized in high school definitely helped in college because it's 10 times worse. Like you may leave on like a Wednesday, miss two classes, play Saturday, Sunday, and then come back late Sunday, have to wake up for 8 a.m. on Monday which was something that I went through freshman year and was a big adjustment. But one thing that really helped me was not only just relying on myself in my time management, but using all my resources. We had a great student athlete development program at Clemson and I was super involved in a lot of their club and organizations. But um, Clemson also provided us with like tutors and any extra resources that we needed to make sure that we're on top of things. So I use that to the fullest. I had a tutor for almost every class my freshman year because I was very like capable of doing my own studying and stuff. But it's also nice like talking through problems if I didn't know or just being able to hear it from someone who took the course. Like here's a key tip on how to study for this um, and just like more explanations in depth. So making sure that I stayed on top of everything. I had a huge agenda too. So that definitely helped writing everything down and seeing it, but also just knowing that it's a student athlete name for a reason. Like student comes first. It's not athlete student because if you aren't eligible academically, you can't perform athletically. And if you're also stressing academically, it's going to affect your play on the court. So I just always knew that I wanted to put my academics first. That's another reason why I chose Clemson because it's a very prestigious university. And the diploma that I have now, I hold near and dear to my heart. But I knew that's my end goal. Like, yes, I want to play my four years collegiately, but at the end of those four years in that fall, I'm going to be walking across the stage in that December. So that's kind of just like my motivation, knowing that, yes, I'm in college to have fun and play the sports that I love, but I'm also in college. Like, there's classes I need to be taking and focused on. 1,000%. I mean, you know, because I know there's other student athletes out there that kind of, you know, they kind of complain and, and grumble about, oh, you know, like, I'm not really here for the academics part. I'm really just here for the athletics. But even yeah. if you were to flip the two around, like athlete, student don't even sound right. I right. Mean, you know what I mean? Like yeah. student athlete just sounds right. And so mm -hmm. I've never heard nobody say that. But, you know, in, in ways and more often than not, people try to like illustrate, illustrate it to the point where, no, you know, I, I like I feel like, you know, athletics are more important and school is kind of just here. You know yeah. what I mean? So it don't even sound right. So no, for sure. I definitely think a lot of people don't realize that. At the end of the day, you want coaches and teammates and other support staff to support you as a person first, because if they just see you as an athlete, then they wouldn't care about your grades and they wouldn't care if you're passing your classes or not. So having right. that structure, and I know there's a lot of athletes like, oh my gosh, like they're blowing up my emails. Like, I don't want to do this. Like, I'm tired. And yes, we're all tired. Like I have pulled all nighters before we have been in the library and I may have set an alarm like an hour before a test is due. However, I'm going to get it <laughs> <laughs> because- I can relate. Yeah, no, sometimes you got to wake up early, just get it done because I'm going to get my sleep regardless. But sometimes you have to realize that at the end of the day, you also want to set yourself up for the best success in the future. Like for volleyball, yes, we have like, pro in other countries, but we don't have an NFL or NBA where a lot of times those athletes, yes, you could go straight from college and then you can do a continuous education afterwards. But a lot of times for other sports, like 
you might as well knock it out now. So then once you finish your career, you already have that foundation made for whatever your next job is or opportunity. Especially like if you go to such a prestigious school for athletics and you are athletically gifted to get to that university, why not use it to your advantage and go ahead and get that degree to put next to it? Facts. I mean, it's just being more knowledgeable just about anything, you know, period. I think it's just such a such a bonus. You know what I mean? Like back then it was looked down upon to, to be a nerd, quote unquote nerd or to, to be smart, quote unquote. And now it's just like I don't think those really hold true anymore. You know what I mean? Like just being knowledgeable and, you know, having, you know, having a degree and speaking of degrees, you actually majored in criminal justice, right? Yes, I did. And I minored yeah. in athletic leadership. Okay. Then I said, you got a lot going on. Um, <laughs> and okay. So I, now I'm going to switch over to, to Radford. And mm -hmm. I know off air, we kind of talked about how, you know, you, you said that the recruiting process was a little different. So yeah. explain to me what you meant by that. And what made you choose Radford University? Yeah. So the recruiting process, I don't think I've had a typical recruiting process throughout my whole athletic career. But the biggest change was now this transfer portal. This whole right. thing is crazy. The transfer portal was jumping this year for volleyball. Um, I think it's such a great opportunity, though, for a lot of student athletes, because a lot of times student athletes, you know, you make a decision so young. And yes, it may sound like great in the moment and not putting any university down because everybody has different reasons on why they want to stay or why they want to go. There's coaching changes, there's team changes, there's environmental changes. There's a lot of things that go on and that go into the process of why you want to leave the university. However, the transfer portal did make a huge impact on recruiting because it gave student athletes like a resource to say like, okay, you are not trapped. If you don't feel comfortable doing something that you don't no longer want to do or be a part of, so here, enter this place, the safe place, and you can contact other coaches and you can reach out. And like, I know they had other transfer, like transferable ways before like this year, but I feel like this year just really impacted because we have so many social media accounts. So you're seeing girls, like their pictures, like uploading. You're like, whoa, like she's leaving, like where is she going to go? But it also kind of helped with recruiting because I know like I followed a lot of the transfer pages on Instagram and I'm looking at girls. I'm like, okay. She's leaving here. She's outside. So this school is possibly looking for outside in this class, especially with the COVID year. So they gave everybody um, an extra year because of COVID due to the NCAA eligibility. So I have a fifth year right now because of that year was given back. So a lot mm -hmm. of time for grad transfer, especially like me, is very limited in their spaces because now not only are you in competition with other grad transfers in competitions with the juniors, sophomores, and freshmen who are already on the team. You're also in competition with that incoming freshman class because a lot of coaches are trying to figure out like, okay, am I going to bring in a seasoned veteran or am I going to bring in a freshman that I can mold and sculpt into the next couple of years? So that's like a really big like way in in this recruiting process. And I know a lot of girls in the transfer portal struggled finding a school because not only are a lot of coaches giving those extra years back to the girls already on the roster and bringing back their fifth years. They're also trying to compete for international students who are coming in and needing a place to play. You have other grad transfers, other people who have like six years who like redshirted or had an injury. And then you also have the incoming freshmen. So it wasn't the same recruiting as like, I'm only competing with the class of 2018, which was like my incoming freshman year. I'm competing with the like, 2018, 2019, 2020 old freshman classes already on the roster, other grad transfers and incoming like 2022 freshmen. So it was really intense. But the reason why I eventually chose Radford is because throughout my recruiting process, I was in the portal fairly early. I entered the portal September of 2021. I talked to my head coach. She understood that I wanted to get my master's and I loved my time at Clemson and I knew like I talked about earlier, I'm ready to conquer another state. I feel like I checked Clemson off my box. I love it. I will always be back. I'll be back for alumni weekend in the fall. But I really felt like I want to take my experience and everything that I learned and go dominate another program and also help that program grow and raise. So during my recruiting process in the fall during season, I was talking to a couple other universities and I wanted to become a mid-year originally. But due to a coaching change, the school that I wanted to go to, I realized it wouldn't be the best to just go mid-change because they didn't have a head coach at the time. So I re-entered the portal. <laughs> and then I 
was just kind of like looking at schools, like I said, on the East Coast. I wanted to stay close to home. And Radford came up. So I looked at their program. I saw they have an MBA program. It's fully online. And I was like, okay, this is kind of checking off everything I want in my master's program. Let me look at their volleyball. I remember hearing their name come up a couple times in the NCAA tournament. That I know they won a couple conference championships. And I'm like, that's one thing that I didn't get at Clemson, which I love my team and the program. But we never got a chance to make it to the tournament because the ACC just was very competitive. So I'm like, it would be really cool if I can find a program who competes for a championship title in their conference and then also gets the chance to make an appearance at the tournament. So Rafa was shaking everything off. I'm like, let's reach out to the coaches. I reached out to the coaches. They responded to me same day. I emailed them, I think, at like 1 o'clock. I got an email back at like 3 o'clock, asked them to get on a call. I got on a call with them. I loved how they were just so invested in their players and knowing like the potential they have on their team. But I also liked how they really wanted to incorporate like bringing in a transfer. So I'm like, that's my biggest thing is I don't want to step on anybody's toes. I just want to come in and help grow a program. But I also want that support and that same like fiery energy from the coaches. And that's exactly what Coach Teresa, the head coach, gave me. So I talked to her, loved her on the Zoom. She talked to my parents, which was also a big thing is like my family approval because Wherever I go, that's going to be my second family, my second home at the time. And that's another reason why I chose Clemson. It felt like a second home, and that was a huge family there. So once they really loved the coach, I went on a visit. I drove up like two weeks later, drove up by myself, toured the campus, met the girls, and I literally knew that second. I had the same exact feeling I had at Clemson. I sat in the office, and I told her, I was like, I'm ready to compete, compete for a ring, and I'm ready to work with you. Like, we're going to change this program, so let's do it. And I committed on the spot. Talk your stuff then, Crystal. Where, uh, where's Rafford for that, by the way, though? Now, I probably should have done some research into this. Oh, it's fine. It's in Virginia. So it's about 20 What's minutes from Virginia Tech. Um, it's the city is called Rafford. It's 20 minutes from Blacksburg, which is where Virginia Tech is. So that's nice because it's also Virginia Tech is ACC. So when Clemson plays them, I'll go and cheer them on. But Ooh. it's nice because I haven't been to Virginia. So why not go ahead and keep on moving up? <laughs> And conquering other states, right? Like yeah. we talked about. So that, mm -hmm. that's another state for you to go out there and conquer, which I believe wholeheartedly. I know we just met, but I mean, I'm just, I'm sensing and I'm feeling this energy, you know, and <laughs> you're giving off, you know, this superstar vibe. So, you know, keep doing your thing. <laughs> and I'll be rooting for you. You know, you got to send me the links. I'm trying to watch games. I'm trying to watch you, you know, do your Dougie out there. So, no, I got you. Know, you. I'll send you the videos. Yeah, please. You know, I don't play no volleyball, but, you know, whenever I get, get out there, especially during the summertime, beast volleyball, oh, you don't want to see me. You don't want to oh, see me. I, 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 I swear, you don't want no smoke. No, I want all the smoke. I yeah. smoke. <laughs> and but like I told you, you know, if you, if you get it out to, to um, what's it called, to the bay over the summer, you know, we got to mm -hmm. set something up because, you know what I mean, I, I want to see what it's like going up against a D1 superstar volleyball athlete. Like, ain't that something, right? No, I got you. We'll play for sure. <laughs> all right, man. All right, cool, cool. Um, but Chris, we've been talking a whole bunch about your volleyball journey. And so I want to kind of get to, you know, get to you just a little bit and like i said we will touch on you know what you're doing over at press sports but like i brought up you know you got over what is it 102k i think on tiktok on instagram you got 11 and a half k and so you know more ways than one you're also a content creator on top of being a student athlete you know on top of all the other hats that you wear but what got you into tiktok and instagram you know you're real entertaining i love what you do i love your energy but talk to Thank me about you. that yeah so it's funny because I basically got onto TikTok during quarantine, but before quarantine okay. hit, and I give all the credit to these two girls that was on my Clemson team, their name was Kenna Slava and Ani Clark. We used to make TikToks in the locker room, just fun. They told, they showed me TikTok and I was like, what is this? Like, this is not Vine. <laughs> what is this? Yeah, so I'm like, give this out my face. I will stick to Instagram. So they're like, no, Crystal, make these videos. So, you know, we're still making funny videos. So I started like actually getting on TikTok. I'm like, Okay, you know what? I'm gonna blow up on TikTok. I don't know how yet, but I'm going to. And I told Ani, and Ani was like, Crystal, you're going to. Like, she believed in me. Like, I could ha I have the messages to this day still. So we're talking a lot, I'm like, I'm gonna figure it out. Like, I think I'm just gonna make like funny like sports content because like I think there's not a lot of like relatable stuff out there right now. And all of us are going through the same thing. So eventually I'm like, okay, I'm gonna post one video a day and just see where this goes. Like, I'm just really having fun and just posting anyways. I already was posting silly stuff on my Instagram story and Snapchat. And people would just swipe up and laugh. But I'm like, why not post it on TikTok and see how it goes? So I started like posting a little bit, a little bit in the locker room, silly dances, just having fun. And then quarantine hit. 
So once quarantine hit, I moved back home and I'm on my phone and I'm like, TikTok is addicting. I'm on here for like two hours, just laying in bed. I was like, I need to like actually get up. So then I started working out and I was like, let me make like workout videos. Like, why not? So those started getting a little couple of views, but then I started going back to making like the relatable, like athlete joke stuff. And out of nowhere, they just started blowing up. So people are like sharing them. I'm seeing them pop up on like other Instagram accounts. I'm like, wait a minute. Like, that's me. Yes. <laughs> so I'm like, uh, what's happening? So I look back on TikTok and I'm starting to get a little following. And I remember like mid quarantine, about like February, I had like, not February, like, maybe like March. February, I had like 200 followers. So I'm like, I'm about to give up. March, I hit like 4,000. So I'm like, okay, I made it. Like, I'm really thinking, like, oh. that's it, I'm done. So I'm like, I don't need any more. Like, these are like enough for me. And it was never about like getting the followers. I just thought it was really cool to like make a funny video that everybody could like relate to and enjoy. But eventually, I'm like, okay, I'm gonna post once a day, just other little jokes that I'm thinking about or anything that I see. I literally will scroll on TikTok, find a sound, and then like be like, okay, I'm about to make this video and save it for later. So eventually, I just kept posting, kept posting. And then I made one TikTok and it just completely blew up. I remember Overtime Women's Basketball posted it on their Instagram, all these other like Instagram accounts. Uh -huh. I'm like, what is going on? And then I started seeing that there's people that actually are genuinely making content for a living. So I'm like, that's cool because we're virtual right now. So why not? So that's when I really dialed in. I was like, okay, I'm just gonna like keep making like funny content, like other relatable things that like we can all share. We're all on our phones anyways right now. So this is a way to connect. And it wound up working out. I just kept posting other little videos will blow up here and there. I eventually started making like a following and it was especially volleyball wise, all the volleyball jokes. I had a lot of volleyball girls in the community following me. They would ask for tips. I would get DMs, just reaching out. And it was really nice seeing that I found a way to connect to that like younger generation of athletes because a lot of the things that I didn't have access to when I was younger, even though I'm still like pretty young, but it's a couple years ago, but especially like press sports, like the app, we didn't have like TikTok where we could just post highlights, blow it up, and then the coach could literally see and like follow you off of that. Mm -hmm. So that was really cool to reach out to that youth. And then get, I got so many DMs asking, like, how did you recruit it? Like, please give me tips, all this stuff. And then girls will spin back like a couple months later, like, I just recommitted to my school. Thank you so much. Like, that's the best feeling ever is seeing that like my advice or even just like my small impact on such a social media platform is actually like helping people. But eventually, I guess I got a following um, just because I uh, people like my personality, thankfully. <laughs> right. And you were just consistent. You know, you have fun. You was uh, and you have yeah, you have a lot of fun doing it. So sometimes you know, success comes when it's it's unexpected. You know what I mean? You're just doing something consistently. You're you know, there's no real intentions of you know trying to blow up or you know some folks they'll make like a social media thing and then they'll be like, yeah, I'm on here to blow up. You know what I mean? You kind of just hopped on. It's kind of doing it for fun. I and just thought it was funny when I would rewatch it. Like I would watch my right. own video like six times. So I'm like, okay, I'm laughing. So I think someone else will laugh at this. Yeah, and I mean, I, it had me laughing. You know, I'm, I'm not even trying to sound like I was over here, you know, watching everything. But you know, from the ones that I watched, like it made me laugh. And so it's just like, you know, like before I got to interview, I was just like, she seems so just vibrant, and you know what I mean. Like there's this just glow with with their character, and so you know, just to be able to sit here and and you know say that you're actually in, like I kept saying, you know, you're my coworker now. And so, um, I was actually waiting till the end to bring up your official position, but. You're now the head female personality with Press Sports. So, again, congratulations. Welcome to the team. Welcome to the family. Glad to have you on board. Um, but how how's that been going? What made you want to start working with us? And I guess, I mean, we kind of work the same position, so I kind of know some of the things that you're doing. But, you know, talk to me about some of the things you have done so far, you know, for Press Sports. I know you're only, what, like a week or two in, but it's laying on me. No, definitely. So... It's funny because the way that it came about is I was just talking to my parents maybe a couple weeks ago before I even heard anything about the press sports like opportunity. And I was like, I really want to make a volleyball page of highlights. I said that and I really quote, like I have the book upstairs. I wrote down in my journal. I write everything that I want to do. Like all my goals, I write it down. I'm like, I'm going to do it. Yeah. And it works. So like, if I can say one advice on here, write down what you want to do and then tackle it head on. And then when you, when you finish, then you can cross it off. But until then keep looking at it. So I wrote down, I was like, I'm gonna make a volleyball page. I kept saying that. So I'm like, okay. Like I don't know if you can read that, but. You wrote down your goals? 
<laughs> yeah, I just I be writing my goals down on these little things, but yes, no, and I just have it all over my desk, my rooms. Um, but it's my bad. I wasn't trying to interrupt. I just kind of want to tell the audience a visual example. Yes, no, <laughs> it's because right writing down stuff and speaking into existence is so true. I did that with everything. I wrote down that I was going to go to grad school. Check. I wrote down that I wanted to find a school that offer scholarship thankfully like I wrote it down 10 times but I'm gonna find it I'm gonna find it I'm gonna find it like especially in my journal my journal really says nothing is impossible unless you decide not to do it and I write everything down so I wrote down in the same journal I want to make a volleyball page and I'm looking at my phone one day and I get a text from my friend who also played at Clemson he transferred to Georgia Tech and that's another thing just like networking and making genuine connections will go so far in life so we were good friends on campus. He reached out. He's like, hey, like I'm interning for Press Sports. And we we're talking about looking for someone to kind of like run a volleyball page, someone that's like interested. Like, would you kind of be interested? And I'm like, look at my phone. I'm like, I literally look at my mom and I'm like, I just said this. Who <laughs> Like, who's listening out there? Because I just said this. And my mom's like, respond. And I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah. So I'm like responding. And I'm like, yes, like I would love to do it. Um, tell me more about the company. So he's like, it's press sports. Like, I'm gonna send you the Instagram pages. You can look into it. It's an app. Um, they really reach out about a lot of student athletes and also helping like people tell their story, but also like get out there. I'm like, that's dope. That's I want to be a part of that immediately because I feel like every athlete and every person has a story, and a lot of people feel like their story may not be big enough or I shouldn't tell it or I'm not the biggest or I'm not the fastest or whatever. That doesn't matter. Your story is your story and people should always hear it. And you should also always have belief in yourself. So that's why I looked on the app and I'm like, I'm loving this. Like people are putting themselves out there. They're creating opportunities for themselves. I'm looking at the videos. They're hilarious. Like it's similar to my content. Everything was checking off the box. So I reached out to my friend. I was like, please, like, his name is Paul. He played um, football. Comes tonight. He plays at Georgia Tech. So shout out to him for this opportunity. And I told Paul, I was like, set me up a meeting. I want to meet with Drew. Like, let's do it. So I met with Drew and I met with Katie in the way that they were just like talking so passionate about like what they were doing and like the app and like how it just really is like a great platform for not just like athletes alone, but like coaches, like fans. Like it's really a community. And that's like my biggest thing is I'm huge on family. They created their own family. So that's kind of how the opportunity presented itself. And they asked if I wanted to be the head female personality. And I'm like, you guys like my personality? Like, okay. So I wind up um, telling them, like, let's do it. Like, let's start it up. And this is my second week. I basically make a lot of short form videos. I kind of do a lot of green screens on, like, the TikTok page. And kind of just, like, adding a little bit of, like, Crystal Flair, I guess, on a couple of videos. Your flavor, yeah. Yeah, you know, just a little, a little salt there, a little spice. <laughs> now, nah, Chris, I just wanted to say, you know, you fit the description real well, you know, and like I said, like I genuinely mean this. I'm not just saying this just because, you know, you're a new member, but I genuinely mean this. Like, not only do you fit the description, but, you know, you're the exact kind of personality person that we was looking for. Because, I mean, Drew was asking me, he was telling me, like, yo, hey, bro, help me find somebody, you know what I mean? And I had a couple of, you know, females that I had, or, you know, women in consideration, but, I mean, I, I'm glad that I kind of held off on, on bringing those names. Though. Otherwise, I don't think we would have, you know, came across you. And so. Thanks um, for not saying them. <laughs> <laughs> I got you. I got you. Um, but, Crystal, as you know, actually, no, real quick. And I know you haven't really been posting too much, but to the people out there, um, and we will put this on the screen, but, you know, tell the people your your press sports username and to the people out there, please be sure to fan her up. Welcome her to the app, spam her DMs, comment on all of her posts, let her know that she's welcome to the team. Let her know you guys are happy to have her on board. But uh, Crystal, if you may, uh, drop your username real quick. Yes, like, please give me reach out whatever. Um, it's just Crystal Childs on there. And underneath, it should say female head personality on TikTok, um, C dot money four wise with an underscore, and then Crystal underscore Childs on Instagram. I'm always on my phone. I'm so into answering any questions, any advice that I could give. I've learned a lot of life lessons, <laughs> especially throughout my like athletic career. And I just love to be able to help out in any way. So like, please reach out, fan me up, hype me up on Press Sports app. Yes, yeah, sir. What she said, fan her up, hype her up. Uh, send those DMs. Be sure to follow her on her socials. And uh, and like we talked about, you brought this up, but 
Um, you talk about how like we all have our own unique individual stories, and that's one of our slogans here at Press Sports. You know, hashtag what's your story? Mm -hmm. Um, and, and so Crystal, one more question though before we go. And I know you know time flies when you're having fun. Um, mm -hmm. but but Crystal, as you know, the Press Sports app has thousands, not just volleyball players, but athletes, you know, of all kinds. They use the app every day. And mm -hmm. I know you, you brought up a couple of tips early, but I know you got a lot more in your back pocket. So what other tips do you have for other athletes, you know, that are in middle school, high school, uh looking to transfer, looking to get into the transfer portal and whatnot? But what are some tips on how to get recruited and how to best enjoy your athletic journey? Yeah, absolutely. My first tip, and this goes for any type of athlete, young, transfer, fresh into college, believe in yourself because you are there for a reason. And I feel like a lot of times, especially I know in college athletics, it's really hard. Um, you're in a whole new environment, especially from high school. You're with people you've known for maybe years and college is completely starting over. Just know that you worked all those hours for a reason. And at the end of the day, do what makes you happy. If it makes you happy staying, then stay, dominate and kill it. If it makes you happy to try something new, don't be afraid of change and go for it head on. Um, for middle school and high school athletes, I am fully invested into believing in yourself, but also putting yourself out there. Like, be a sponge, like you mentioned. Um, this is a time of growth and change and development, especially in middle school. I know a lot of times girls are very frustrated, like, why am I not getting this? But if you got it on the first try, then you wouldn't need to be here and you wouldn't need to do anything else. So why not? Like, if you get on the first try, that's perfect. And then like tweak it a little bit, like make it better. There's always like room to grow. I know as like a hitter, especially for my volleyball athletes, always getting different reps in because not every set's going to be the same and you're not going to be 100% every single day. So that's kind of just like my tips for volleyball specifically, but for all athletes and recruiting, stay confident, reach out to coaches. Coaches are not bothered if you're blowing up their phone and blowing up their emails because half the time, and this is a fact, they will miss a lot because they get swamped. So for my high schoolers who are going through the recruiting process right now, call coaches, call them, call them, call them. You are not getting on their nerves. I talked to a couple of girls that feel like, I feel like I'm bothering them. This is their job to find <laughs> athletes like you. Email them, put in your put in your press sports like account, like put in your highlights. I emailed coaches every single week, different clips of me or a, even a full set. Like you can watch me make a mistake. Watch how I bounce back, like different little things. It doesn't have to be your top 10 plays. Show them how you are moving on the court. Show them what you can do and what you can grow at. Because a lot of coaches, they will look at your film and be like, Okay, yes, you're good at this, but I like that you're not amazing at this because we can change that when you get here. Coaches aren't looking for the LeBron James of high school athletes. They're literally looking for Steph Curry's who are ready to be molded and sponge and dominate their school and then take off and take over the world. So just like stay confident in yourself, continue reaching out. If you feel like you are in a stuck situation just take a step back reset relook at everything that you're doing and then get back at it don't let anybody tell you no if they tell you no that's fine because that's not the yes you're looking for wow hey to the ladies and gentlemen out there i mean what more can you ask for right talk about free game oh my god <laughs> <laughs> we landed out there. Oh my gosh, y'all make sure taking notes, you know, get a pencil and write in your journals for kind out loud. I mean, oh my gosh, yes, I should have got a journal upstairs, but write everything down. I promise you, it works. Right. I, I, I mean, look, I've I started doing that a couple years ago, you know what I mean? And I started seeing results, and I feel like the more that I do it, the more results that I get, you know what I yeah. mean? And it kind of just motivates me to, you know to continue to work towards my goals. Cause I, I know just like you, you know, I got a lot, you know what I mean? We, we got plenty, not just states to conquer, but we over here trying to conquer the damn world. I mean, why just stop at states? We're trying to conquer the world. We need it all. We don't get the universe. We just going to take over. Exactly. Right. Not to, not to sound greedy or nothing, you know what I'm saying? But, um, but miss Crystal Childs floor is yours, but please, before we go, um, let the fans, let the audience know where they can find you. I know you just put out your Instagram and your, your TikTok handles, but, you know, please do so again. I mean, anything else you want to add, anything you got coming up, any announcements, just anything you want to tell the people, just go ahead. The floor is yours. Yeah. So once again, my Instagram is crystal underscore child. 
folks, please feel free to DM me. I am not Hollywood. I do respond. <laughs> and I love you big guys. Like, don't worry. Yeah, no, I'm not. I check the DMs all the time. <laughs> Unless you're going to come with something crazy. Because I got a couple crazy ones uh, after my video last week about the water boy situation. But oh. yeah, that was rough. <laughs> However, DM me. I will give great advice. I promise. Or if you just even need somebody to talk to or a conversation, any questions asked, I'm completely open to it. My TikTok is seed.money. Probably going to change it soon to make it a little easier for people. And my press sports app is Crystal Child. You'll see me wearing my purple jersey pointing at you in the profile picture. And my last advice to leave with everyone is, once again, have fun with it. Sports is supposed to be fun and memorable and make those memories. Cherish it, especially high school and club and AAU and travel. Those teammates are going to be in your life forever. I'm still super close to every single one of my teammates. I've already gone to two weddings, which is so crazy to say. Yeah. But it, I, I know. I'm like, oh, my gosh. I'm not in high school anymore. But it's really fun <laughs> just having connections because – you can see the growth in everybody and everybody that you're meeting right now is in your life for a reason. So be appreciative of your coaches. Tell your coaches, thank you, especially your high school coaches. If you're a college athlete that helped you create that foundation, go back to send them a text. They appreciate it. Stay confident in whatever path you're in and whatever energy you are in right now. It you're in a hard time. It doesn't stay hard forever because you can always grow and change. If you feel like you can't learn something new, take a step back, ask somebody else, ask me, and just continue having fun with what you're doing. Enjoy it and smile. Man, I'm starting to think uh, you you could be a great motivational speaker down the line. I mean, look, look at you. <laughs> <laughs> you just over here um, giving out just a whole bunch of game. So, uh, we'll Crystal, book next. <laughs> we gonna have, you going to have to. We're going to have to. I, know, I mean, about it. I hate writing. Maybe I'll type a book. What? Oh, so I, for me, I love writing. I don't know if you can see, but you know, this is one of my favorite pieces right here. You know, I, I had to frame it up for a reason. Um, yeah, no, thank you. I mean, look, if you ever need some, you know, tips, if you ever need help with writing, you know, not to toot my own horn or none, but you know, that that's me. Um, well, I got <laughs> but, but Crystal, again, thank you so much for taking the time to do this. Um, this I had a blast. I had a whole bunch of fun. Um, but yo, we about to sign off. This is me, your boy. This is me, your host, Steezy A. Smith with Press Sports featuring Chris and Charles at Radford University and Press Sports, your two head personalities for Press Sports. Again, if you have a story to tell, if you want to be featured in an interview, be sure not only to download the app Press Sports, um, but start posting. Start putting your highlights out there. Start telling your story. And who knows? Maybe we'll be telling your story for you on one of these interviews. That's it for us, y'all. Hope you guys have a great night. Have a good night. <laughs>